All right, hi everybody. We're going to write this function right here uh, in terms of a piecewise function. Okay, now this is a slightly different one because this function opens down. So we're going to have a quick look at this. Uh, this, as before, with uh, similar questions, what we're going to do is find out where this thing hits zero first. I, I simply want to know where it crosses the x-axis because that's going to be the boundary between positive and negative which is that means that it's going to be the boundary between places where the absolute value changes the function and places where it doesn't change the function. But I'm lazy, so I'm going to divide through by that negative first to make that 2x squared plus x minus 15 equals 0. Okay, that's got to be a 2x, it's got to be an x, that's the only way I'm going to get a 2 out of that. Uh, let's see, 15 here, if I make this a plus 3, 3 and a minus 5. When I multiply that out, I'll get plus 6 minus 5x. That's going to get me the plus 1 inside there. And if I convert these factors into roots, that'll be positive 5 halves and negative 3. Okay. Now again, if you if you need more time factoring that and whatnot, that's that's fine. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going through this pretty quickly here. But again, this gives me this gives me two x-intercepts. I, if I ignore the absolute values right now, I see that I've got a parabola that opens down. So that means the parabola is doing something like this. It's positive here, and it's negative here. Okay, it's positive in this section right here, as long as it's above the x-axis, and it's negative down here. So if I'm going to write this as a piecewise function, okay, remember the very first thing I'm going to identify is, is when the, the absolute values don't change anything. The absolute value will simply change, uh, will simply leave the function alone. It won't do anything. Okay, don't worry about the negative in front here or anything like that. Don't worry about that. The absolute value will simply leave it alone if the function is positive, and that's going to occur in this little blip right here, where it jumps, jumps above the x-axis then drops below, and that occurs between negative three and 5 halves. So x, sorry, you can't see that. x is greater than or equal to negative 3, x is less than or equal to 5 halves. It's in between those two. Then, the other thing that the absolute value does is if this function ends up being negative, then the absolute value throws a negative in front. Well, that occurs here outside the two, fun uh, the two roots here, I should say. The two, I was going to say the two uh, zeros of the function here, but Anyway, that's outside here. So that's going to be where x is less than negative 3 or x is greater than 5 halves. So we saw in a, in a previous example that if the function opens up, if the function opens up, okay, then the positive one is, goes with the outside. It goes outside the roots. And then uh, in between the roots is when it, the, the, the absolute value changes it. But here, because this function opens down, then my positive part here will be between the two roots and my negative part will be outside. It's, it's either going to be one or the other, everybody. So if you just remember that pattern, the only thing that you really got to work at here is finding those x-intercepts. And if factoring doesn't work, you already know you can use the quadratic formula.